In last episode we sailed from Desert Island to Adolphus, Mount Adolphus, in the very north of Australia. And for there it was just a little hop to Horn Island, uh, across from Thursday Island, where all the boats were anchoring and clearing out of Australia. Really close to Thursday Island already. I think most boats are already going to Horn Island today. She is the only one who wants to go up in the mast. After Thomas arrived and Marijke was ready to get on the plane back home, we were preparing for the departure to Indonesia. Ja, zeker. Voor je terugreis, maar ik heb. Doei. There they go. Ja. There you see the ferry who's going from Horn Island to Thursday Island. So we turn now with our nose into the wind. So there is no pressure when we put up the mainsail. We start with one reef because it can be uh, gusty. Now we will jive the mainsail. So first we tighten him up and put him in the middle. We don't want to have damage on the sail. But slowly. And this is where the current starts. Already four knots. Five knots of current. It's, uh... Pretty helpful. It's good that it's not against, because otherwise it would have been. Uh... The crossing is a little bit less than 700 miles, but the big theme of the crossing is to avoid all the fishing boats. And we're not talking about uh, 5 or 10 or 20, but uh, there are literally hundreds of fishing boats along the route. So there is a way to sail around it. Different boats in the rally had different strategies. Uh, our strategy this time was one of the safer ones as we got a lot of feedback from the boats that already left before us. Well, the question is whether the Indonesian fishing fleet is more worried about us than we are about the fishing fleet. The boats that went before us warned us for miles and miles and miles long nets. They are using AIS beacons, certain distances to mark the nets, but the nets themselves are all the way up to the surface.
think the captain isn't half bad, to be honest. Oh yeah, look at this. Nice cappuccino. Really great. The oh, sea is very blue over here, probably because it's uh, pretty shallow. Still only 20 meters deep. We switched to the Code Zero. Once we overtook uh, the other boats, uh, we decided it makes more sense to stay closer to them. Nobody in front of us anymore. stay is still going good so important when you do a crossing We jived the uh, Code Zero. We're gonna wait until it's completely light. Well, it's almost light now. And then we will furl the Code Zero and get the reef out of the mainsail and then put the Janneker on instead of the Code Zero. So we can make some speed uh, during daylight and then see before it gets dark what the best strategy is for the next night. Then see that there it is furrows and we go up it was an eventful morning you're ah. all awake but uh, it's nice to have uh, Starlink eh? Yeah, and did you extra captain on board. And did you <laughs> did you know that Starlink has a remote captain function? <laughs> We're still both south and west of the fishing boats. And other boats have gone more straight, so shorter line, but uh, had to change course not to hit the very, very, very long nets that are just at the surface over here. Because of the big sails, we have a lot more pressure, and it's very comfortable. So. This conclusion, just always sail with the huge sails and your current goes down and your stability goes up. A mega net being deployed just north of us.
We just uh, said uh, hello uh, to Inky. They're out there. We're heading straight for Nino now on our other side. They are there. Thomas did a nice curry with scampis. Mm, very good. And Marijke is boarding her plane in Cairns to Singapore and then further to Amsterdam. And 10.2 in the first four hours. So we are sailing for 34 hours in the meantime. Might have to jive one more time. This is the third day of our crossing from Australia to Indonesia, <laughs> and uh, well, it's more of the same. We took the safe route, but that means that there's not a lot to do. We don't see other boats, so now even Joost. <laughs> Uh, well, he is Belgian, but he's not very renowned so far for his cooking capabilities. No, is no, no. It's an experiment. Is baking uh, Chaps' uh, banana bread recipe, but with a Belgian influence. Belgian chocolate, yay! Uh, or in, in uh, I, don't th I don't think it's any higher than the one from Marijke. I think uh, I just measured. Oh yeah? It's just <laughs> <laughs> I measured the height of the cake and I think it's uh, at least two millimeters higher. Than well, from this side it doesn't look like it. No. The third day of our crossing from Australia to Indonesia. It looks a bit like the evening of the second day, to be honest. Uh, we've chosen the safe way uh, the last couple of days, and uh, that has a bit, a little bit, been boring, as all the other boats are a little bit further to the east and a little bit further to the north. They are playing with the fishing boats and dodging them and all kind of exciting stuff. We are making a couple of miles more, but at a higher speed, so we will easily end up together with them, or before them probably, in 12. We're heading west again, or a little bit uh, west-northwest, as we're going in between the fishing boats here on the, on the left of us. There are a couple of them on the reef, and there are a lot more at the island we're passing uh, further to the north. In the end we had uh, two very quiet nights, but it was our turn in the last night as well, as there were squalls coming from east to west. At the same time it turned out that we still weren't far enough uh, to the southwest, and we encountered a big mass of AIS beacons and ships. It's very difficult to see the difference between a buoy and a ship. And then there was a line of lights right in front of us. Uh, starting the rain already. We saw a line of four or five white lights in front of us in between the fishing boats that uh, Joost was pointing out on the right hand side and a whole group of boys that is uh, gathered there. We're using radar 
to locate the fishing boats. Not all of them are using AIS. But the squalls of course uh, colored the whole radar screen uh, red and blue and, uh, and yellow. Uh, it was impossible to make a distinction between uh, the squalls and, uh, and any ships there. After one and a half day we see the first Levo boat. I think we made 60 or 70 miles more than the other boats. In the end we, we all arrived more or less at the same time uh, in, uh, in Tua. Yeah, you wouldn't believe this, but this guy is going to be a doctor. Maybe. He passed the exam to be able to go to the university in Belgium. Yeah. <laughs> so the champagne is already cold, waiting on us, on arrival. Kind of relaxed this morning. Well, it's not a problem after last night. Which was uh, interesting. Combination of fishing boats and, uh, and skulls. Arriving in Indonesia, a couple of miles to go until the corner of the island, and then 12 miles inside to the anchorage. We'll try to go a couple of miles in and get the sails off uh, over there. Ja, die zijn aan het jagen, ja. Ja, dat zijn toch fijne volgens mij ook. Pearl farms or fish farms in the water, but. We managed uh, to be there around 3 p.m. so just in time to enable us to get the clearance the same day which was pretty well organized by rally control. Luc did a good job in making sure that uh, all boats that arrived in that afternoon were cleared in. It was, was kind of a nice procedure. I think there are nine or ten people coming on board first. They're checking all kinds of uh, different stuff but all in a very relaxed uh, atmosphere and we were checked in uh, in no time. Strange guys on, our, on my boat. This, this, this normally doesn't happen uh, on Great Circle. The worst of it is that Joost was going to make breakfast and now all of a sudden he stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that Thomas needs it because because what? All the girls on the side were already shouting Thomas, Thomas, Thomas the whole time. Well, the boys as well, to be honest. <laughs> Monica and Fu went out because Nino might have touched the reef. But he's still afloat at least. I saw him go backwards. <laughs> Serious business, uh, SIM cards. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, takes, it takes a while. It's uh, for 21 gigabytes. It costs uh, 12 euro. 12 euro. It's a really nice island over here. The people are so friendly and happy and smiling. We are really enjoying ourselves. 
We stay here a couple of days before we make a 200 mile crossing to Banda. 